Greetings from CNS and welcome to this new episode of NTB Dialogues, a special CNS series presenting insightful and thought-provoking interviews and conversations with leaders to accelerate progress towards ending TB. This series underpins the urgency to step up the fight against the pandemic. 193 countries have promised to eliminate TB by 2030, while India has promised to end it by 2025. So only 75 months are left to end TB in our country and 135 months are left to end the, uh, to end the disease globally. Business as usual is failing us in uh, meeting the NTB target goals by 2030. New and fresh thinking is vital to reimagine every critical cog in the wheel to end this e epidemic, as well as to accelerate progress towards other SDGs. This episode of NTB Dialogues features a very special guest, Dr. Ashwani Khanna, who's the state TB control officer, government of Delhi, the capital of India. He is a very renowned physician and heads the TB chest clinic at Lok Nayak Hospital, New Delhi. Where I first met him way back, I think it was 200, uh, 2012 or 13. And I was truly impressed to see at that time, TB diabetes bi-directional screen, screening going on in his very well ventilated OPD. We also saw there for the first time, the gene expert being used, although it was yet to be rolled out in the national TB program. Welcome Dr. Khanna. Thank you so much Dr. Uh, Dr. Kanna, in your opinion, how important is it to empty the pool of latent TB infection if we want to end TB? See, we know very well that half of our country is infected. And uh, this is a source after we have eradicated the diseases from other sources, which are the active cases. So end of the day, the pool becomes very important because this is the pool from where all the patients are going to come. We know that 10% of the patients who are having latent tuberculosis in the lifetime will break up into the disease, which is more common amongst the, uh, you know, the HIV, where it goes up to 50%. So 10% of half our population who is infected, breaking into disease, we have a large number of latent TB who are likely to break into uh, active tuberculosis. How do we empty this pool? And what is being done to empty the pool? See, you know, we can't attack all the 50% 50, 50 of the population. So we have to strategize. We have to, you know, prioritize who are the ones who are the ones that have the highest chance of getting a disease at the earliest and start treating them for latent tuberculosis. And that's what we are doing now. We are doing is we are ensuring that all the HIV patients who are having TB infection are also taken care of by treating this latent pool. And similarly, children who get infected with mothers. Now, we know very well the maximum chance is amongst the new children who have been recently infected in the last two years. So, we are going to give them, we are making sure that they also get their prophylaxis. Besides that, even the household contacts, the adults, will need to be taken care of, especially the ones who are living with TB. And after ruling out an you know, active disease amongst them, they need to be also treated for latent TB if found to be having latent TB. Okay. Uh, how often, other than uh, people living with HIV, in uh, other people, how often do you come across uh, people with latent TB infection in your uh, medical practice? We do. Uh, in, uh, we get a lot of patients who are getting having latent TB. But, you know, latent TB, we are not looking for latent TB as of now, except, you know, if we have intention to treat latent TB, of course, then we look for them. At the moment, we are really not looking for latent TB. But yes, the ones we have prioritized, they are looked into and they, they are being treated. That is irrespective of their HIV or their latent TB status also. So these are prioritized groups. And later when we move, then we will look for them. And this is what we are doing in patients who are need to be put on steroids, who are uh, the ones who are having biologicals to be given them or who have a Decrease immunity, we do take into consideration those patients who need to be put on long-term steroids. So we give them, after ruling out latent TB, we can give them prophylaxis. They are very, they are, they are also a sizable group. Uh, what is the rationale for not doing test and treat 
uh, in high burden countries. Means I, I could be infected with latent TB, but if I'm asked just to take the treatment uh, without even knowing whether I actually, I may be a high risk group, but I'm not sure whether I have latent TB. So what would you like to say on that? See, amongst the HIV, it's very difficult at times to know the HIV state. With the HIV, they decrease immunity also. And see, the people who are going to get TB anytime during the course, when the CD4 counts are low, even when they're higher up, they have very high chance. And the chance of dying out of a disease when you have a comorbid condition, HIV, also negates the, I mean, requires that we should treat them as a group with latent TB, uh, you know, a drug so that we prevent the breakout disease amongst them. They can get infected later also. Uh, now, I, as I said earlier in my introduction that I was highly impressed by uh, the setup in your hospital. So what tests are you using and what TB preventive therapy is being uh, made available to latent TB, people with latent TB? Latent TB, as per the guidelines, we are giving them INH prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. Children getting 10 milligram and adults getting 5 milligram. That is adults, that means HIV. So this is as per the national policies. Everybody who is having requires uh, INH prophylaxis are giving. So we are using only INH as a mode of therapy in for prophylaxis in India as of now. And so the, all the TB patients who are coming to your uh, facility, uh, are the contacts being uh, traced for them? They're uh, close contacts and they are being put on prophylaxis? So we, it, as, for the, as far as the kids are concerned, a okay. uh, detailed history is taken, a visit is done by the HB to the house and anybody who is found to have children in the house which are less than 6 years of age are evaluated for TB, those kids and if found to be tuberculosis they are treated otherwise they are put on prophylaxis and this is monitored and the drugs are given every one month till the time they have taken treatment for 6 months. Okay. Uh, and what about the other household contacts? Uh, other household contacts, we are just screening for the disease at the moment. We are not looking for, uh, uh, you know, latent TB amongst them. And if found to be having signs suggestive of tuberculosis, they are evaluated for tuberculosis. And if found to be tuberculosis, they are treated. No latent TB treatment is given to them. That okay. is adult I'm talking about. Huh. But uh, is there, uh, in future, do you plan to extend the treatment or no? See, we'll be extending the treatment as per the government of India policy. Okay. We will be doing it, yes. Wherever required, we'll be doing it. This is as per the government of India's take on that. Okay. Now, ensuring better implementation of infection control practices uh, actually will require healthy people to perceive themselves at risk of uh, the disease. That is what mm -hmm. latent TP is about. Uh, so, how can we encourage healthy people to opt for, say, voluntary latent TB testing. Even say it's not in the program, it has to be voluntary. But what needs to be done uh, for common people like us to perceive the health risk of latent TB? So that we need a good IC campaign. Along with it, we need to counsel the patient. And especially the ones who are really vulnerable, we have to make sure amongst the ones which we have covered, certainly not. Um, they are already getting it, but the ones who have not been covered in the national program, they need to be told what is the risk involved if you do not take this prophylaxis and then the danger of the disease, tuberculosis, which is how uh, the treatment becomes, you know, with much more, you no know, number of drugs increase, the duration also can go up and it's, uh, you know, the toxicity of the drugs from a single drug with ionic prophylaxis as of now to six months of therapy with multiple drugs is much more simpler. And then you will be safe from getting a disease. You will not have to, now you are disease free, but if you get symptoms, then you will have problem with. And if you're infected, you can infect others. So those type of things have to be told and the risk perception has to be told to them. Okay. Uh, how often has this, uh, the latent TB test or treatment, is it to be repeated or is it a one-off uh, prophylaxis to be given? As of now, is one of as a prophylaxis to be given. But uh, I means scientifically, the science behind it, I want to know that. Uh, Normally, it gives you prophylaxis, gives you prevention for quite some time. At okay. least in HIV, you know, when you give it, uh, when the CD4 count is high, low, then there are much more chances of getting a disease. But as soon as, soon as the person is put on antiretroviral therapy, 
the chance of getting their disease goes down comparatively when the CD4 count goes up and you know cover them for a period of up to two to three years, whatever the you know different figures give different uh, studies give different figures of coverage. So we are able to prevent that disease happening within that time and for a period maybe up to two years at least. Okay. Uh, have you come across any problem, say, with the children when you are giving prophylaxis to child uh, uh, children contacts of uh, TB active TB patients? Uh, first of all, are there any adherence issues? Uh, yes, I was coming to that also. You're right. Yes. This are, adherence are an issue. You know, these are the patients who are given drugs at home. They are mm -hmm. told that they need to be given, and we expect they are being given. So it becomes difficult. All we can do is fill counting at some time and see whether they have given that. If they have got 30 tablets, they have taken all the 30 tablets. Or when you go visit midway, say out 15 days, they must have finished 15 tablets and 15 tablets should be done. So this is slightly a difficult procedure. But what we do is we do a good counseling and ensure that the patient completes the therapy. So they should, they're told for the risk perception. And with children, you know, very often the mothers are much more concerned. So they, we expect that they are doing it. But uh, more than that, we have to ensure that the coverage is also high besides completion of therapy. So there are two issues. Making sure every child who is eligible should get and everybody who should be put on IPT should be completing the therapy to have an optimal outcome. Otherwise, not only regular duration, even regularity has to be ensured. So uh, have there been any cases uh, where people on... Uh... Uh, uh, TB preventive therapy have developed resistance to the medicines? No, I'm not aware of it. But yes, okay. we do have patients who have got children, very rarely we see children who are put on therapy. Oh. Uh, the child has come after a few years with few years I mean, recently okay. with TB infection disease this time. But they have been found to be drug sensitive. So th okay. these are, we are really not really looking into it. So I'll really not like to comment on that. Okay. But uh, yes, but we are not sure whether the patient took the treatment regularly for the prophylaxis. Right, right. That that is a big issue. Issue. And uh, and uh, and uh, how do you propose to overcome that? Because th that's a very important uh, point uh, which you have mentioned here that adherence issue. So how to we must have a you know this is as strong. A, it's just like a program. The way we are monitoring a program, treating patients. A much higher number will be put on IPT. I mean, if it's INH or multiple drugs. Mm -hmm. So you have to ensure that manpower should be there to ensure that the, all these patients who have been suggested to take the therapy are taking it, taking it regularly, following what the guidelines are and regularity. And of course, monitoring has to be done to ensure they are taking it. Otherwise, uh, what is happening in the field may be different from what we perceive. Uh, and you said the role of counseling is important. And I also remember when I uh, met you in 2012, uh, there, was a, there were very good counseling facilities there at your clinic. I was really impressed by that. So that is continuing even now because role of counseling is very important. I yeah, think. very important. You know, uh, uh, in a, if a doctor counsels well and mm -hmm. uh, once for all uh, at the very beginning, the patient is normally a very good listener at that time when he's ill. So they listen to you everything. And if the counseling is done well, it, it serves quite a bit of purpose. It's very important because at the end of the day, duration is so long. The patient has to be told and you have to listen to him also besides giving what you have to tell them. Right, right. Uh, have there been any cases of uh, any side effects of uh, this TPT, the TB preventive therapy? Any uh, person... Uh, see, our limited, our you know, limitation is only to HIV patients and the pa okay. children. children so we, are, yeah. we are not really, you know, seeing them. But of course, we expect there should be a few percentage, uh, you know, one to two percent patient might have problem with INH prophylaxis also because of phytotoxicity, which is there with the drug. But I have, personally, I have not really seen. Uh, is there anything uh, which is drug resistant latent TB? It's just coming to my mind. Is it, there can be. You have, you have INH resistance here in India. So, mm -hmm. but the number is so low, not the okay. number of INH resistance, the number of the bacteria in latent TB is so low. So, mm -hmm. it's not that important. But yes, latent TB infection with an INH uh, infected, uh, in, uh, INH resistance strain is an issue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there, uh, in the, we were talking of adherence issues. 
has stigma got something to do with this stigma associated with uh, people with latent tb and being put on treatment see people are not really aware of what latent tb is so stigma hmm. doesn't really come into the picture hmm. they know about the disease as soon as somebody has a disease everybody knows there's a disease but infection even if people know they know a lot of people know that they are infected but they are not diseased so i don't think so stigma is there because of we have half the population if they are infected so stigma is doesn't become an issue it becomes an yes. issue because it's a lower number of percentage of people are having a disease that stigma was okay. there it's much improved now what is compared to earlier but then yes not with infection but with disease there is okay uh, the global tb report uh, as we know the latest global tb report does not paint a very encouraging picture of tb control globally of course india has made strides and we are on the path uh, but uh, i think we have to do some out of the box thinking maybe and reimagine tb care and control uh, could you suggest any such approach or approaches which can help accelerate this war against tb some we have a national strategic plan which has really well spelled out what needs to be done hmm. i think sticking to the national strategic plan doing whatever has been asked us to do will go a long way and uh, like you said prophylaxis is also a part of it infection control is a part of it so all the part of it and if we are able to adhere to this all these things looking for all the patients taking care of drug resistance involving the private sector taking care of other comorbid conditions so these are very helpful i mean it's a very well spelled out national strategic plan and uh, i think we should stick to it and uh, do it with full vigor and move towards uh, as planned move towards a tb free india in very near future which is hardly you know 5 years yes. away yes yes hardly 5 years away uh, uh, what about the roll out of bedaculin and delaminate are there any challenges there or uh... any See, challenge Delhi, on the we ground. don't have any challenge as far as the new drugs are concerned hmm. all the patients who are eligible for uh, newer drugs that is bedaculin which is available in delhi hmm. is not a problem everybody is being put on it so hmm. and we, as a matter of fact we have nearly you know over i think 1800 patients amongst them all the if the country has about 7 8000 patients put put one fourth one i mean one fourth to one fifth are from delhi so we have a a large number of patients in delhi who are getting better and anybody who is eligible is getting it's not that it's not uh, we are not even thinking of it hmm. eligible uh, better clean means they get it okay okay and what about the laminate is it that is not laminate clean? we have put about 12 patients on treatment we have the amount what the courses we have caught and hmm. uh, these are the basically few orders and been more of children more and as we have other new drugs available they'll be getting it as per the national program all right um, your message for the forthcoming union world uh, uh, conference for on lung health we would like um, a message from you the message is i think uh, it's high time and uh, everybody is geared up we have a deadline in front of us let's work towards it and try to have a tb free world soon okay thank you very much dr khanna friends you were listening to this special episode of ntb dialogues a special cns series presenting insightful and thought provoking interviews with leaders to accelerate progress towards ending the disease today we were in conversation with dr ashwini khanna state tb officer of delhi state and a renowned tb specialist thank you dr khanna thank, thank you very so much thank, thank you bye